Here are 50 most commonly asked scenario-based interview questions and answers. For Kubernetes administrator roles, each with detailed and non-generic answers. 1. Scenario, your organization needs to deploy a highly available application on Kubernetes. How would you design the deployment to ensure high availability? Answer, to ensure high availability, I would deploy the application using a deployment resource. Specifying multiple replicas in the deployment manifest to ensure redundancy. I would configure the pods to run on different nodes by using anti-affinity rules to avoid a single point of failure. Additionally, I would use a load balancer service to distribute traffic across the pods and configure a readiness probe to ensure that only healthy pods receive traffic. Persistent data would be managed using stateful sets with persistent volume claims, ensuring data durability. 2. Scenario. You are tasked with setting up a CI or CD pipeline for deploying applications to a Kubernetes cluster. How would you integrate Kubernetes with your CI or CD system? Answer. I would integrate Kubernetes with the CI or CD system by using a tool like Jenkins, GitLab CI, or Azure DevOps. The pipeline would include steps to build Docker images and push them to a container registry like Docker Hub or Azure Container Registry. Using Kubect or a Kubernetes plugin for the CI or CD tool, I would create a pipeline stage that Deploys the application to the Kubernetes cluster by applying the relevant YAML manifests. To automate deployment, I would use tools like Helm for packaging Kubernetes resources and customize for managing environment-specific configurations. 3. Scenario, your team needs to scale an application dynamically based on CPU usage. How would you configure Kubernetes to achieve this? Answer, I would configure the horizontal pod autoscaler HPA to scale the application based on CPU usage. The HPA resource in Kubernetes allows for automatic scaling of the number of pod replicas based on observed CPU utilization or other select metrics. I would define the HPA configuration in a YML file specifying the target CPU utilization percentage, and the minimum and maximum number of replicas. Kubernetes would then automatically adjust the number of running pods to maintain the desired CPU utilization. 4. Scenario. You need to provide secure access to a Kubernetes cluster for multiple development teams, ensuring least privilege access. How would you set this up? Answer. I would implement role-based access control RBAC to provide secure, least privilege access to the Kubernetes cluster. First, I would define roles and cluster roles that specify permissions for accessing Kubernetes resources. Then, I would create role bindings and cluster role bindings to assign these roles to users or groups. I would use namespace to isolate the resources of different teams and restrict access to specific namespace based on the team's requirements. Additionally, I would integrate Kubernetes with an identity provider, such as LDAP or Azure AD, for user authentication and authorization. 5. Scenario. Your organization wants to use Kubernetes for a stateful application that requires persistent storage. How would you configure persistent storage in Kubernetes? Answer for stateful applications requiring persistent storage. I would use persistent volumes PVs and persistent volume claims PVCs. I would provision PVs using storage classes that define the type of storage backend, for example, AWS, EBS, Azure Disk, NFS. In the applications, YML, manifest, I would define PVCs to request specific storage resources. The stateful set resource would be used to manage the deployment of stateful applications, ensuring that each pod gets its own persistent storage. I would also configure the storage class to support dynamic provisioning, so PVCs are automatically bound to suitable PVs. 6. Scenario. Your application is experiencing intermittent failures due to pod crashes. How would you investigate and resolve the issue using Kubernetes? Answer. 
I would start by inspecting the logs of the crashing pods using Quebec logs. This would help identify any errors or exceptions occurring in the application. Additionally, I would use Quebec's Describe Pod to get detailed information about the pod's events, including reasons for restarts or failures. I would check the resource usage of the pods using Quebec Top to ensure that they are not running out of CPU or memory. If the issue persists, I would enable more detailed logging and monitoring using tools like Prometheus and Grafana, or using Kubernetes built-in logging and monitoring features. 7. Scenario. Your Kubernetes cluster is running out of resources, and you need to add more worker nodes. How would you scale the cluster? Answer. To scale the Kubernetes cluster by adding more worker nodes. I would use the cluster's underlying infrastructure management tool. For example, in AWS, I would use the Amazon EKS Auto Scaling Groups to add more EC to instances to the cluster. In Azure, I would use Azure AKS's Node Pool Scaling feature. I would update the configuration to increase the desired number of nodes, and the cloud provider would automatically provision the additional instances I would also ensure that the new nodes are properly registered with the Kubernetes cluster and that they join the node pool. 8. Scenario. Your application needs to handle SSL, TLS termination at the Kubernetes ingress. How would you configure this? Answer. I would configure an ingress resource in Kubernetes with an ingress controller that supports SSL, TLS termination, such as Nginx ingress controller or traffic. I would create a TLS secret in the Kubernetes namespace that contains the SSL certificate and private key. The ingress resource would be defined to use this TLS secret, specifying the host that the certificate applies to. The ingress controller would handle incoming HTTPS traffic, terminating the SSL TLS connection at the ingress point and forwarding the traffic to the appropriate backend services. 9. Scenario. Your team needs to perform a rolling update of an application to minimize downtime. How would you configure Kubernetes to achieve this? Answer. To perform a rolling update, I would use a deployment resource in Kubernetes. I would configure the deployment with the new version of the application and apply the updated manifest using Kubec to apply. Kubernetes would then gradually replace the old pods with new ones ensuring that the application remains available during the update. I would configure the strategy section in the deployment YAML to specify the rolling update parameters, such as max and available and max surge, to control the number of pods that can be updated or created at a time. 10. Scenario. You need to migrate an application from one Kubernetes cluster to another with minimal downtime. How would you approach this migration? Answer. To migrate an application with minimal downtime, I would first set up the new Kubernetes cluster and replicate the application's configuration, including deployments, services, config maps, and secrets. I would use tools like Helm or Kubectal to export and apply these resources to the new cluster. For data migration, I would ensure that persistent storage is copied over using appropriate backup and restore tools. I would then configure DNS to point to the new cluster's ingress controller. During the migration, I would gradually shift traffic from the old cluster to the new one, monitoring for any issues and ensuring seamless transition. 11. Scenario. Your Kubernetes application needs to connect to external services securely. How would you configure Kubernetes to handle secure communication? Answer. For secure communication with external services, I would configure Kubernetes secrets to store sensitive information like API keys, certificates, and passwords. The application pods would be configured to mount these secrets as environment variables or volume mounts. I would also use network policies to restrict outbound traffic from the application pods to only the required external services, minimizing exposure. If mutual TLS MTLS is required, I would use a service mesh like ISTIO to 
Manage secure communication between services, both within and outside the cluster. 12. Scenario, your team needs to run a batch job periodically on Kubernetes. How would you schedule and manage these jobs? Answer, I would use Kubernetes cron jobs to schedule and manage periodic batch jobs. A cron job resource allows specifying a cron schedule for when the job should run. I would define the job specification within the cron job, detailing the pod template, container image, and commands to execute. Kubernetes would handle the scheduling and execution of the job based on the defined schedule. Additionally, I would configure job history limits to retain logs and outcomes of completed jobs, aiding in monitoring and troubleshooting. 13. Scenario. You need to manage secrets securely in Kubernetes. How would you approach this to ensure the confidentiality and integrity of sensitive data? Answer. To manage secrets securely in Kubernetes, I would use Kubernetes secrets to store sensitive data. Access to secrets would be controlled using RBAC, ensuring that only authorized users and service accounts can access them. For added security, uh, I would integrate Kubernetes with an external secret management solution, like HashiCorp Vault or Azure Key Vault, using the Kubernetes Secret Store CSI driver. This allows secrets to be dynamically fetched from the external store and injected into pods securely. Additionally, I would enable encryption at rest for Kubernetes secrets, ensuring that they are encrypted in ETCD. 14. Scenario. Your application in Kubernetes requires specific node-level configurations. How would you ensure that pods are scheduled on nodes with the required configurations? Answer. I would use node affinity and node selectors to ensure that pods are scheduled on nodes with the required configurations. Node selectors are simple key value pairs attached to nodes and matched by pods to schedule them on specific nodes. Node Affinity provides more advanced matching capabilities, allowing for required and preferred scheduling rules based on node labels. Additionally, I could use taints and tolerations to ensure that only specific pods can run on nodes with particular taints. Further controlling pod placement based on node configurations. 15. Scenario. Your Kubernetes cluster needs to support multiple environments like development, staging, production on the same cluster. How would you isolate and manage resources for each environment? Answer. I would use namespace to isolate and manage resources for each environment within the same Kubernetes cluster. Each environment like development, staging, production would have its own namespace, ensuring separation of resources and configurations. I would apply resource quotas and limits within each namespace to control resource usage and prevent environments from impacting each other. Additionally, I would use RBAC to manage access control, ensuring that only authorized users and service accounts have access to the appropriate namespace. 16. Scenario. Your team needs to monitor the performance and health of a Kubernetes application. What tools and methods would you use to achieve this? Answer. To monitor the performance and health of a Kubernetes application, I would use a combination of tools and methods. Prometheus would be set up to collect and store metrics from the Kubernetes cluster and application pods. Grafana would be used to create dashboards for visualizing these metrics, providing insights into performance and health. I would configure alerting rules in Prometheus to notify the team of any performance issues or anomalies. Additionally, I would use tools like Elasticsearch, FluentD, Kibana EFK, Stack for log aggregation and analysis, helping to troubleshoot issues effectively. 17. Scenario your organization wants to implement a service mesh in Kubernetes to manage microservices communication. How would you deploy and configure a service mesh like Istio? Answer, to deploy and configure Istio as a service mesh in Kubernetes. I would start by installing Istio using the provided Helm charts or Istio operator. I would enable sidecar injection for the namespace that need to be part of the service mesh either manually or automatically. This ensures that Enver sidecar proxies are deployed alongside each service pod, 
managing communication and traffic routing. I would configure Istio ingress and egress gateways to handle external traffic securely. Additionally, I would define Istio policies and destination rules to manage traffic behavior, enforce security, and enable observability features like tracing and monitoring. 18. Scenario. You need to troubleshoot a networking issue in your Kubernetes cluster where pods cannot communicate with each other. How would you diagnose and resolve the issue? Answer. To troubleshoot networking issues in Kubernetes, I would start by checking the status of the network plugins, for example, Calico, Flannel, to ensure they are running correctly. I would use Kubect Get Pods and Cube System to inspect the status of network related pods. Using Kubect Describe and Kubect Logs, I would look for any errors or warnings related to network components. I would verify that the pods have the correct network policies applied and that there are no misconfigurations blocking traffic. Tools like Kubect Exec can be used to run network diagnostics, for example, Ting curl from within the pods to identify connectivity issues. Additionally, I would check the cluster's firewall rules and cloud provider's network configurations to ensure there are no external factors causing the issue. 19. Scenario. Your Kubernetes application requires external configuration files that are updated frequently. How would you manage and deploy these configurations? Answer. I would use config maps to manage external configuration files in Kubernetes. Config maps allow for the storage of non-sensitive configuration data that can be mounted as volumes or injected as environment variables into pods. I would define config maps for the required configuration files and update them as needed. The pods would be configured to reload the configurations automatically when the config map changes. Using tools like Cube Reload or by configuring the application to watch for changes. This approach ensures that the application can dynamically adapt to configuration updates without requiring redeployment. 20. Scenario. Your team needs to implement blue-green deployments for a Kubernetes application. How would you configure Kubernetes to support this deployment strategy? Answer. For blue-green deployments in Kubernetes, I would create two separate environments blue and green using different namespace or deployment resources. The current production version would run in the blue environment, while the new version would be deployed to the green environment. I would configure an ingress resource or a load balancer service to route traffic to the active environment. During the deployment, Traffic would be gradually shifted from blue to green using DNS updates or by modifying the ingress rules. Once the new version is validated, the green environment becomes the new production, and the blue environment can be updated or rolled back if needed. 21. Scenario. Your application running in Kubernetes needs to connect to a database outside the cluster securely. How would you configure Kubernetes to handle this? Answer. To securely connect a Kubernetes application to an external database, I would use Kubernetes secrets to store database credentials securely. The application pods would be configured to access these secrets as environment variables or mounted files. Network policies would be defined to restrict outbound traffic from the pods to only the external database IP or hostname, ensuring secure communication. If the database supports TLSSSL, I would configure the application to use encrypted connections, providing an additional layer of security. 22. Scenario. You need to perform a canary deployment for a new version of your application in Kubernetes. How would you set up and manage this deployment? Answer. For a canary deployment in Kubernetes, I would use multiple deployment resources to run different versions of the application simultaneously. The new version would be deployed with a smaller replica count, representing the canary deployment. An ingress resource or a service mesh like Istio would be used to route a small percentage of traffic to the canary deployment, while the rest goes to the stable version. I would monitor the performance and behavior of the canary version closely. If the canary deployment is successful, I would gradually increase the traffic 
to the new version until it completely replaces the old version. 23. Scenario. Your team needs to ensure that a Kubernetes application is resilient to node failures. How would you configure Kubernetes to achieve this? Answer. To ensure resilience to node failures, I would configure the application using deployments with multiple replicas distributed across different nodes. I would use pod anti-affinity rules to prevent pods from running on the same node reducing the risk of simultaneous failures. Additionally, I would configure the Kubernetes cluster with multiple availability zones. If supported by the cloud provider, ensuring that nodes are spread across different zones. Health probes like liveness and readiness probes would be set up to automatically restart or reschedule pods that fail, ensuring continuous availability. 24. Scenario your organization needs to implement a backup and restore strategy for persistent data in Kubernetes. How would you approach this? Answer, I would implement a backup and restore strategy by using tools like Valero, which is designed for backing up and restoring Kubernetes resources and persistent volumes. Valero can be configured to take periodic snapshots of persistent volumes and store them in a backup location such as an object storage service. I would set up backup schedules to ensure regular backups and configure retention policies based on organizational requirements. For restoring, Valero can be used to restore specific resources or entire namespace from the backups, ensuring that data can be recovered in case of failure or data loss. 25. Scenario. Your team needs to migrate a legacy application to Kubernetes. How would you handle the migration and what challenges might you face? Answer, to migrate a legacy application to Kubernetes, I would first containerize the application by creating Docker images for each component. I would analyze the application dependencies and configurations to ensure they are compatible with the containerized environment. The next step would be to create Kubernetes manifests like deployments, services, Config maps, secrets to define the application's desired state. Challenges might include handling stateful components, refactoring code to be cloud native, managing persistent storage, and ensuring that the application's network configurations work within Kubernetes. Thorough testing and phased migration would be essential to address these challenges. 26. Scenario. Your Kubernetes cluster is experiencing high latency issues. How would you diagnose and mitigate these performance problems? Answer, to diagnose high latency issues, I would start by monitoring resource utilization. Using tools like Prometheus and Grafana to identify any resource bottlenecks like CPU, memory, disk I, or O. I would inspect the pod logs and use Quebec Describe to check for any events or warnings that might indicate problems. Network performance issues could be diagnosed using network performance monitoring tools and checking for misconfigured network policies or ingress controllers. I would also review the applications, resource requests and limits to ensure they are appropriately set. To mitigate the issues, I might scale out the application optimize resource allocation, or improve the underlying infrastructure. 27. Scenario. Your organization needs to implement multi-tenancy in a Kubernetes cluster. How would you configure the cluster to support multiple tenants securely? Answer. For multi-tenancy in Kubernetes, I would use namespace to logically separate resources for different tenants. Each tenant would have its own namespace, and RBAC would be used to enforce access control, ensuring that tenants can only access resources within their namespace. I would configure network policies to isolate network traffic between namespace, preventing cross-tenant communication. Resource quotas and limits would be applied to control the resource usage per tenant, preventing any single tenant from consuming disproportionate resources. Additionally, auditing and logging would be enabled to monitor tenant activity and ensure compliance. 28. Scenario, your team needs to run a Kubernetes cluster in a hybrid cloud environment. How would you set up and manage this configuration? Answer, 
to set up a Kubernetes cluster in a hybrid cloud environment. I would use a Kubernetes distribution that supports hybrid deployment, such as Kubernetes on-premises, for example, VMware, Tanzu, and a managed Kubernetes service, for example, Azure AKS, AWS, EKS. I would establish a secure network connection between the on-premises data center and the cloud environment using VPN or Direct Connect. Kubernetes Federation could be used to manage multiple clusters across different environments, providing a single control plane. I would ensure consistent configuration and policies across the hybrid environment, and use tools like Helm and GitOps for unified application deployment and management. 29. Scenario. Your application requires the use of custom DNS settings in Kubernetes. How would you configure Kubernetes to support this? Answer. To configure custom DNS settings in Kubernetes, I would modify the core DNS configuration, which is the default DNS service for Kubernetes. I would create a config map with the custom DNS settings and apply it to the core DNS deployment. This config map could include custom DNS zones, forwarding rules, or additional DNS entries. I would then update the core DNS pods to use the new config map by reloading the configuration or restarting the core DNS pods. Additionally, I would ensure that the application pods are configured to use the cluster DNS by default. 30. Scenario. Your organization needs to ensure compliance and auditing for Kubernetes cluster activities. How would you implement this? Answer. To ensure compliance and auditing in a Kubernetes cluster, I would enable Kubernetes audit logging to capture detailed logs of all API requests and cluster activities. I would configure the audit policy to define what events should be logged and the level of detail required. The logs would be collected and stored in a secure, centralized logging system such as Elasticsearch or a cloud-based logging service. I would use tools like Falco for real-time security monitoring and alerting on suspicious activities. Additionally, it would implement RBAC policies to enforce least privilege access. And use tools like Open Policy Agent OPA to enforce compliance policies. 31. Scenario. You need to enforce resource limits on a Kubernetes namespace to prevent resource exhaustion. How would you set this up? Answer. To enforce resource limits on a Kubernetes namespace, I would create a resource quota object within the desired namespace. This resource quota would define the maximum amount of CPU, memory, and storage. That can be consumed by all pods and containers within the namespace. Additionally, I would create limit range objects to set default resource requests and limits for individual pods and containers. This ensures that every resource created within the namespace adheres to these constraints, preventing any single workload from exhausting cluster resources. 32. Scenario. Your Kubernetes cluster is experiencing frequent pod evictions due to resource pressure. How would you identify and resolve the underlying issue? Answer. To identify and resolve frequent pod evictions due to resource pressure. I would start by checking the cluster's nodes for resource usage using Kubect top nodes and Kubect top pods. This would help identify any nodes or pods with unusually high resource consumption. I would then review the eviction events using Kubect get events to understand the specific reasons for the evictions. Based on these insights, I would adjust the resource requests and limits for the pods, ensuring they are set appropriately. If necessary, I would scale up the cluster by adding more nodes to provide additional resources and reduce pressure on the existing nodes. 33. Scenario. You need to ensure that your Kubernetes application can automatically recover from failures. How would you configure Kubernetes to handle this? Answer. To ensure automatic recovery from failures, I would use a combination of deployments, stateful sets, and replicasets, depending on the application type. Deployments ensure that the desired number of replicas is always running, automatically restarting failed pods. For stateful applications, 
Stateful sets provide ordered and graceful deployment, scaling, and deletion of pods, ensuring each pod gets a stable network identity and persistent storage. I would also configure liveness and readiness probes in the pod specifications, allowing Kubernetes to detect and restart unhealthy pods automatically. 34. Scenario. Your team needs to ensure network isolation between different applications running in the same Kubernetes cluster. How would you achieve this? Answer. To ensure network isolation between different applications, I would use Kubernetes network policies. Network policies allow defining rules that control the traffic flow between pods, namespace, and external endpoints. I would create network policies for each application, specifying allowed ingress and egress traffic. This would involve defining selectors for pods and specifying which pods or CID are. Blocks can communicate with each other. By applying these policies, I can enforce strict network isolation ensuring that applications cannot interfere with each other. 35. Scenario. You need to manage configuration changes for a Kubernetes application without restarting the pods. How would you achieve this? Answer. To manage configuration changes without restarting pods. I would use Kubernetes config maps and volumes to mount configuration files directly into the pods. This allows for dynamic reloading of configurations without needing to restart the pods. For applications that support hot reloading, I would ensure that they watch for changes in the configuration files. Additionally, tools like kubereload or anotify can be used to detect changes in config maps and trigger reloads within the application, ensuring seamless updates. 36. Scenario. Your organization needs to deploy a Kubernetes cluster across multiple regions for disaster recovery. How would you configure this setup? Answer, to deploy a Kubernetes cluster across multiple regions for disaster recovery, I would use a multi-cluster setup with Kubernetes Federation or a service mesh like Istio to manage communication between clusters. Each region would have its own Kubernetes cluster and resources would be replicated across clusters using tools like Valero for backups and restores. I would configure DNS with global load balancing to route traffic to the nearest or healthiest cluster. Data replication between regions would be handled using cloud provider services, for example, AWS, RDS, with cross-region replication to ensure data consistency and availability. 37. Scenario. You need to monitor and troubleshoot application performance issues in Kubernetes. Which tools would you use, and how would you set them up? Answer. To monitor and troubleshoot application performance issues. I would use Prometheus for metrics collection and Grafana for visualization. Prometheus would be set up with exporters to collect metrics from the Kubernetes nodes, pods, and applications. Grafana dashboards would be created to visualize these metrics, providing insights into resource usage, application performance, and potential bottlenecks. Additionally, I would use the EFK Elasticsearch, FluentD, Kibana, stack for log aggregation and analysis, helping to identify issues from application logs. Tracing tools like Jaeger or Zipkin would be used for distributed tracing to pinpoint latency issues within microservices. 38. Scenario. Your application needs to process events from a message queue, for example, Kafka, RabbitMQ, and Kubernetes. How would you set up and manage this? Answer. To process events from a message queue in Kubernetes, I would deploy the message queue, for example, Kafka or RabbitMQ, as a stateful set, ensuring that it has the required persistent storage and stable network identity. The application pods would be configured to connect to the message queue, using environment variables or config maps to manage connection details. I would use a deployment to manage the application consumers, ensuring they scale appropriately based on the workload. Monitoring tools like Prometheus would be used to track the health and performance of both the message queue and the application consumers. 39. Scenario. 
you need to ensure that a Kubernetes application can be rolled back quickly in case of a failed deployment. How would you configure Kubernetes to support this? Answer. To enable quick rollbacks in case of a failed deployment. I would use the deployment resource in Kubernetes, which maintains a history of revisions. By configuring appropriate revision history limit, Kubernetes keeps track of previous deployments. If a deployment fails, I can use Kubect rollout undo deployment deployment name to roll back to the previous stable version. Additionally, it would implement health checks like readiness and liveness probes to ensure that the new version is healthy before routing traffic to it. Using canary or blue-green deployment strategies would also help minimize the impact of failed deployments. 40. Scenario. Your Kubernetes application requires communication between services using gRPC. How would you configure and manage this in Kubernetes? Answer. To configure and manage gRPC, communication between services and Kubernetes. I would define Kubernetes services for each gRPC service, ensuring they are accessible within the cluster. The services would be configured with appropriate selectors to route traffic to the correct pods. I would use Envoy or Istio as a service mesh to manage and secure the gRPC traffic providing features like load balancing, MTLS, and observability. The gRPC clients would be configured with the service names defined in Kubernetes, allowing them to discover and communicate with the services dynamically. 41. Scenario. Your team needs to implement secret rotation for Kubernetes applications. How would you manage and automate this process? Answer. To manage and automate secret rotation, I would integrate Kubernetes with an external secret management solution like HashiCorp Vault or AWS Secrets Manager. These tools provide mechanisms for automatic secret rotation. I would use the Kubernetes Secret Store CSI driver to dynamically inject rotated secrets into pods. The applications would be configured to reload secrets periodically or upon notification from the secret management system. This approach ensures that secrets are rotated without downtime, maintaining security and compliance. 42. Scenario. Your Kubernetes cluster needs to support GPU workloads. How would you configure the cluster and schedule GPU pods? Answer. To support GPU workloads in Kubernetes, I would provision nodes with GPU hardware and install the necessary GPU drivers, for example, NVIDIA drivers. I would then install the NVIDIA device plugin for Kubernetes, which advertises the GPU resources to the Kubernetes scheduler. When defining the pod specifications, I would request GPU resources using the resources field, specifying the number of GPUs required. Kubernetes would then schedule the GPU pods on nodes with available GPU resources. Additionally, I would use resource quotas to manage GPU resource allocation across different namespace or workloads. 43. Scenario. You need to perform load testing on a Kubernetes application. How would you set up and execute the load tests? Answer. To perform load testing on a Kubernetes application, I would use tools like Apache JMeter, Locust, or K6. I would containerize the load testing tool and deploy it as a Kubernetes job or a set of pods. The load testing configuration would specify the target application endpoints, test scenarios, and load parameters. The load testing pods would be scaled appropriately to generate the desired load on the application. During the test, I would monitor the application's performance using Prometheus and Grafana. Analyzing metrics like response times, error rates, and resource utilization to identify any performance bottlenecks. 44. Scenario. Your team needs to ensure that Kubernetes pods can communicate securely over a private network. How would you configure this? Answer. To ensure secure communication over a private network. I would configure a virtual private network VPN or use a cloud provider's private networking features, for example, AWS VPC, Azure VNet to isolate the Kubernetes cluster. 
I would use Kubernetes network policies to enforce communication rules between pods, allowing only authorized traffic. For end-to-end -end encryption, I would implement a service mesh like Istio, which provides MTLS for secure communication between services within the cluster. Additionally, I would ensure that external access to the cluster is restricted through firewalls and appropriate ingress configurations. 45. Scenario, your Kubernetes application requires blue-green deployments with zero downtime. How would you configure Kubernetes to support this deployment strategy? Answer, for blue-green deployments with zero downtime, I would create two separate environments blue and green using different namespace or deployment resources. The current production version would run in the blue environment, while the new version would be deployed to the green environment. I would configure a service mesh like Istio or an ingress controller to route traffic between the two environments based on weighted routing or traffic splitting. This allows for a gradual transition of traffic from the blue to the green environment, minimizing downtime and providing rollback capabilities if issues arise. Health checks and readiness probes would be used to ensure that the new version is healthy before shifting traffic completely. Additionally, I would automate the deployment process using CI or CD pipelines to streamline the deployment and rollback procedures, ensuring reliability and consistency. 46. Scenario, your Kubernetes cluster is running out of storage capacity due to persistent volume usage. How would you address this issue and ensure continuous availability? Answer, to address storage capacity issues in a Kubernetes cluster. I would first identify the pods or applications that are consuming the most storage resources using Kubex top pods and Kubex describe PV. I would optimize storage usage by deleting unused resources, resizing volumes, or enabling compression and deduplication where applicable. If additional storage is needed, I would provision more storage volumes or expand existing volumes dynamically using storage classes with dynamic provisioning. To ensure continuous availability, I would implement data replication and backup strategies to protect against data loss and downtime in case of storage failures. 47. Scenario, your team needs to automate the deployment of Kubernetes. Manifests across multiple environments, for example, development, staging, production. How would you set up and manage this automation? Answer, to automate the deployment of Kubernetes manifests across multiple environments. I would use GitOps practices with tools like Argo CD or Flux. I would store the Kubernetes manifests and configuration files in a Git repository, organized by environment and application. Continuous integration CI pipelines would be set up to automatically build and validate the manifests, ensuring consistency and reliability. Argo CD or Flux would continuously monitor the Git repository for changes and automatically apply the manifests to the respective Kubernetes clusters. This approach provides declarative and auditable infrastructure management enabling efficient and reliable deployments across different environments. 48. Scenario, your Kubernetes cluster needs to support high availability applications that require zero downtime rolling updates. How would you configure Kubernetes to achieve this? Answer, to support high availability applications with zero downtime rolling updates. I would use Kubernetes deployments with rolling update strategies. I would configure the max and available and max urge parameters to control the number of pods that can be unavailable during the update process while ensuring that the desired number of replicas is maintained. Additionally, I would implement health checks and readiness probes to verify the health of the pods before continuing with the update. This ensures that only healthy pods are serving traffic during the update minimizing downtime and ensuring a smooth transition to the new version. 49. Scenario, your Kubernetes cluster is experiencing performance degradation due to high CPU usage. How would you identify the cause and optimize resource utilization? 
Answer. To identify the cause of high CPU usage in a Kubernetes cluster, I would start by analyzing resource metrics using tools like Prometheus and Grafana to identify pods or nodes with high CPU utilization. I would then inspect the pod logs and application metrics to understand the workload behavior and potential performance bottlenecks. Using tools like Kubectop and Kubec Describe, I would gather additional information about the pods and nodes, including resource requests and limits. Based on these insights, I would optimize resource utilization by adjusting resource requests and limits. Scaling out the application, optimizing code performance, or adding more nodes to the cluster as needed. 50. Scenario. Your team needs to implement automated testing for Kubernetes manifests to ensure configuration correctness and prevent misconfigurations. How would you set up and manage this testing process? Answer. To implement automated testing for Kubernetes manifests, I would use tools like Kubevel, Customize, and ConfTest. I would define a test suite with validation rules and policies to check. For common misconfigurations, security vulnerabilities, and best practices compliance, continuous integration CI pipelines would be set up to automatically run the tests against the Kubernetes manifest stored in a Git repository whenever changes are made. Test results would be reported back to the development team, providing early feedback and ensuring that only valid and compliant configurations are deployed to Kubernetes clusters. This approach helps prevent misconfigurations and ensures consistency across environments. These scenario-based questions and detailed answers provide valuable insights into how Kubernetes administrators can address real-world challenges and requirements in managing Kubernetes clusters effectively. By applying these strategies and best practices, Kubernetes administrators can ensure the reliability, scalability, and security of their Kubernetes deployments, empowering teams to build and operate resilient containerized applications at scale. For more exciting tips, tricks and more importantly, for valuable insights of interviews, please share, like, and subscribe to my channel. It has a lot of valuable information about various insights of interviews. It has a wide range of real-world portfolio projects of various technologies for interviews, and it has wide range of most asked interview questions and answers of various technologies like data science, SAP, AWS, DevOps, and full-stack web development, and more. That will be useful during interviews. It has a wide range of most asked interview questions and answers and real-world portfolio projects of various technologies for freshers. For two to three years, experienced candidates, and for five or above years, experienced candidates to test their skills by knowing most. Asked interview questions and make themselves ready for interviews.